Joining me now is Ben Domenech, co-founder and publisher of The Federalist and a Fox News contributor. Also with me, Tom Bevan, co-founder and president of Real Clear Politics. Tom, now, this didn't just happen because of Afghanistan. Uh, you get the sense that Americans are just finally waking up to the fact that Biden doesn't seem oftentimes to have any idea of where he is or what he's doing. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, he's been dealing with multiple crises from, uh, you know, the immigration uh, situation at the border to inflation to crime, et cetera. But I do think Afghanistan was the moment where the myth was exploded that that one of was one of Joe Biden's cornerstone of his campaign, that he was, you know, his experience and competence, that adults were back in charge. I mean, that is gone now. And the other thing that I think that happened is one of the intangibles is that it's taken a bite out of his credibility. He promised the American people he would always tell us the truth, good, bad, or otherwise. And he's been shown to, to not be being square with the American people. He's been contradicted by members of his own administration, by reports on the ground. And so I think for those two reasons, Afghanistan has really hurt him and, and really accelerated uh, the decline that was sort of already underway. And MSNBC, Ben, was doing, well, its best damage control for the White House today. Watch. This was certainly not the August this administration had hoped for, and they certainly had hoped to go into September really being able to focus on their domestic policy agenda. Administration officials believe if they can keep the focus, if they can keep the organization and the discipline, they will be able to manage the domestic agenda, the foreign policy agenda they want, while also being able to handle whatever else comes their way. Ben, uh, you hear commentators and uh, political folks on the left saying, well, this is a situation they can manage themselves out of. Do you think that's accurate? <laughs> well, they're, they're practically screaming, not good, Joe. <laughs> I mean, the, and in fact, <laughs> the, the thing that, you know, is really going on here, Laura, and you know this, is that it's not so much motivated by all the bad things that are happening. It's that Joe's making them look bad. It's like, we vouched for you. We said you were competent. We said that you were compassionate. We said that you were an adult in the room. We said that you were able, able to manage the government in the way that uh, President Trump was not. We went out there, we got out over our skis saying, you know, during this pandemic weird campaign where you were completely hidden from the voters, oh no, you can trust in Joe. And now they're looking around and saying, Joe, you're making us look bad. You know, we, we promised that you were going to be good. And now a factor after factor Factor is going against him. And, and one more thing about this, it's not ideological in the sense that like you can you can have an ideological critique of what's going on at the border, but really it's a competence critique. You can have an ideological critique of the decisions about Afghanistan, but really it's can you do your job? And I think that Americans are waking up to the fact that Joe Biden really can't, and he doesn't seem to be really aware or, or willing to acknowledge when he fails at his job. Well, Tom, uh, the White House economic advisor, this guy Brian Deese, wants people to kind of, I think, try to deny what we're seeing, what Larry Summers has acknowledged for many months, which is this impending doom of growing inflation. Watch. About half of the overall increase in grocery prices can be attributed to a significant uh, increase in prices in three products, in uh, beef, in pork and in poultry. If you take out those three categories, we've actually seen in, uh, price increases that are more in line with uh, historical norms. Tom, isn't everything trucked that gas is involved in since it's doubled in price? I mean, we've all gone to the grocery stores, like orange juice, eggs, milk, everything. But will that, will that line work? No, I don't think telling people that, you know, if they just don't eat hamburgers or chicken sandwiches, that that's going to that's going to make things better. Look, there's a YouGov poll out this week that showed that 44 percent of Americans that what they look to is the indicator for whether the economy is good or not. It's not the stock market. It is what it costs for them at the kitchen table, what it costs to put food on the table. And as people are looking around, they are seeing these rising prices. I would also say uh, back to Ben's point, in addition to the competence issue, I mean, one of the problems for the Biden administration is many of these crises are self-created, self-inflicted. They are policy-based, right? The situation at the border, what happened in Afghanistan, these were choices that were made by the Biden administration. These were not things that, you know, came out of the blue. You could say COVID was inherited, but even on that score, they have, I think, created their own problems with regard to, to handling that issue. So a lot of this, uh, what's going on with the Biden administration is really self-inflicted. Now, Ben, I'm looking at this California recall 
And I know people like to say California's lost. There's no way it can ever recover. We don't know what's going to happen. But we do know Kamala was there today. And we know Biden's going there apparently next week with a 39 percent approval rating. What does he do for Gavin Newsom in California? Is he truly a net positive a few days before that recall vote? I think that's a real question, Laura. I'm not sure that he is. I think, you know, frankly, you look at, at Biden going out to California and you kind of see California as the test case for so many policies that Democrats want to bring national, that they want to take to the whole country. And instead, what we've seen is that in California, you know, the, the, uh, the air quality is so bad and the, and the gyms are shut down, you can't go outside, you can't exercise, you can't really live your life. I mean, uh, California should be the golden state. It should be something that we all aspire to. It should be a symbol of greatness for America. And instead, it's an embarrassment. And I think that when you see the, the type of policies that Gavin Newsom has pursued, a lot of it is echoed in what Joe Biden brings to the table. Look, we are in a tailspin moment right now, not just for Joe Biden, but what I think is, is really true for the Democratic coalition. The coalition that he got together in 2020, including a lot of these suburban, uh, white, well-educated women uh, who turned against Donald Trump because of mean tweets and things like that. Guess what? They're the same people who have signs talking about how much they love refugees in front of their houses. These are the same people who are now turning against Joe Biden. I think you're seeing that coalition crumble in a very quick way. And then there was some footage, Tom, out of California, people getting very worried, apparently, about Larry Elder. They called him a black face of white supremacy last week. Now they have someone wearing a gorilla mask was caught egging Larry Elder. We have the video. Um, I'm not sure if that was a COVID approved mask, Tom, or not, but uh, they're getting they're they're clearly not not coasting to uh, September 14th in California. No, no. The way that that uh, the media and and folks on the ground, as you just saw, have been treating Larry Elder is just reprehensible, and I think that speaks to the fact that. Look, the fact that Gavin Newsom is even in in trouble, uh, in somewhat trouble right now, I think is not a good omen for the Democrats. And I will just add real quickly, look, Joe Biden, uh, his approval ratings right now in some, California is a very blue state, obviously, but you look at places like Arizona, where Mark Kelly's up for re-election, Georgia, uh, Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire, where Joe Biden's underwater now by 10 points, his approval rating, That's that is a real concern for Democrats in terms of uh, holding on to the House or uh, the Senate next year around if Joe Biden's approval ratings don't tick back up. Joe Anvil Biden. Gentlemen, thank you. Good to see you tonight.